Could the current UFC champion in every weight class beat the champion in their weight class five years ago? We're going to find that out today. Starting off with heavyweight, could John Jones fight Stipe? Now this one's interesting because John Jones versus Stipe will be happening at UFC 295. So this is going to be current John Jones versus the Stipe five years ago. Personally, I feel like this would be a really hard fight for Jones just because stylistically Stipe wouldn't... I already said in my rant video yesterday... I don't think that John Jones is going to manhandle Stipe, and this is the old Stipe. I can't. I think it's going to be even harder for him to beat the Stipe in 2018. I think Jones would win because it's John Jones. You just can't bet against John Jones. But I think he. I, I think it would be a very tough fight for him. Um, but I think he'd find a way to win. I think he'd find a way to win, whether it be by decision, whatever it might be. I can just see current John Jones beating Stipe five years ago. Yeah, I think John Jones beat Stipe five, five years ago. Although it would be, like I said, it would be a very tough fight because Stipe has got the wrestling, he's got the boxing, he's got the he's got the knockout power. It would be a scary fight for Jones, especially current Jones versus old Stipe. But I've got Jones winning. You cannot bet against Jones. Um, talking of Jones, we're gonna go with Jamal Hill versus John Jones. I think I do. I can't see Jamal Hill beating John Jones. Current Jamal Hill versus 2018 Jones. Jamal Hill doesn't win this. 2018 Jones was prime Jones. Well, somewhat prime Jones. He was kind of having dodgy decisions at this point. But yeah, John Jones would win by submission, in my opinion, quickly. If Jamal Hill gets submitted by Paul Craig, he's probably going to get submitted by John Jones or TKO'd. Jamal Hill might have success on the feet for a short period of time because he is a nice fluid striker. Um, I would say Jones is probably on par with the striking just because of how weird Jones' striking is. Um, but like I said, you can't bet against Jones. John Jones would win this fight. Like I said, George, yeah, Jamal Hill might be able to tag him a little bit. It would be pretty similar to the OSP fight, except I think Jones finishes him quicker. I think he finishes him in the first two or three rounds by a submission. He'll take him down and ground and pound him and eventually find a submission. And yeah, I like Jamal Hill, but I think he loses to Ankalaev. I think he loses to Yuri Prohaska. I think he loses to... Um, what's his name? I don't know. Uh, Jan Blachowicz. I think I think Jamal Hill's an alright fighter, but I don't think he's champion level, especially not against the best in his weight division, John Jones. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to go with John Jones beating Jamal Hill by submission in the first few rounds. Um, it would just be similar to the OSP fight, but maybe even quicker than OSP. Uh, moving on to middleweight. Now, this one's going to be quick because it's Robert Whittaker versus Israel Adesanya. Now, this already happened in 2019, but it would finish. It will be finished already. It will be. It will, I mean, the first fight was finished in like what less than a minute, two minutes. Current Adesanya versus the Whitaker that fought Adesanya five years ago. Adesanya finishes him in like one or two rounds. 2018 Whitaker versus current Adesanya. So prime Adesanya versus 2018 Whitaker. Yeah, I'm sorry. Adesanya wins by, by finishing the first two rounds. Easily. I mean, he knocked him out five years ago. I can only imagine what he'd do nowadays. I mean, that, that knockout five years ago was because Rush, Rob was rushing in, but... Yeah, I see Adesanya beating him. This has already happened twice, but the 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 skill gap would be closed. I mean, would be widened even more. Current Adesanya versus a Whitaker five years ago, Adesanya finishes him pretty easily. First two rounds, especially the fact that Whitaker's just lost to Duplessis. I mean, I know that's the the current Whitaker, but it shows that he's beatable. Whitaker's I don't think he's chinny, but I think he's. I mean, he's just got a normal chin. But, um, yeah, Adesanya now would mutilate. Well, not mutilate, but he'd definitely beat Whitaker five years ago. There's no way that 2018 Whitaker beats current Adesanya. Moving on to Welterweight. Now, this one's a very close fight. I, I kind of struggled thinking of this one. Leon Edwards versus Tyron Woodley. I do think Leon Edwards would have beat Tyron Woodley. Um, purely because Tyron Woodley... Um, I think Leon Edwards is a better striker, Woodley a better wrestler, it's kind of wrestler versus striking matchup. The power goes to Tyrone Woodley, uh, the cardio goes to Leon Edwards. Um, on top of that, Kamara Usman did batter Tyrone Woodley as well. Leon Edwards didn't get battered by, Us by Usman. It would be an extremely difficult fight for Edwards. It, it would. Harder than Colby. I think it would even be harder than the trilogy of the Usman because 
as Tyrone Woodley stylistically is a tough act for Edwards, a pressure, not a pressure fighter with power who can also wrestle, isn't exactly what Leon Edwards wants. I know that's quite similar to Usman, but Usman's way better than um, Woodley. Uh, we saw how hard the second fight. I, I think, I think, I think it'd be easier than the the um, second fight with Usman, but harder than the trilogy. But Leon Edwards would have been by decision. I can't see him KOing or finishing Tyrone Woodley unless Woodley was to completely gas out because Leon Edwards doesn't really have that that finishing instinct or killer instinct. You never really see Leon Edwards going for the kill. Unless he's absolutely put you to sleep with one shot, he'll, he'll t try and kind of break you down throughout the rounds and then eventually win. But um, yeah, I think Leon Edwards would definitely beat Tyrone Woodley. Do I think Woodley has a chance? Yes. Do I think he'd win though? No. I think the the in the past five years the skill in welterweight has gone up, and I think Leon Edwards would beat Tyron Woodley by decision, by it be split decision, unanimous decision. I think he beats Woodley. Moving on to lightweight, this would be an extremely interesting matchup: Khabib versus Islam. I actually think Islam Makhachev could beat Khabib. First of all, they're both Dagestani wrestlers, so it's not like Khabib versus Michael Chandler. It's Khabib versus Khabib 2.0. They're both Dagestani wrestlers. They both train with each other. They're pretty much identical. I'd say Khabib has the more dominant grappling. From what we've seen, they're both extremely 10 out of 10 high-level grapplers, but Khabib is slightly more dominant with the grappling. When Islam takes someone down, they've got a chance of getting back up. When Khabib takes someone down, there's a very low chance that they're going to escape or get 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 out of that, you know, get up. Islam does have the better striking, though, from, the, from what we've seen. He managed to stand with Volkanovski. He even dropped him at one point. He stood with Bobby Green. He stood with... Well, he didn't really stand with Dan Hooker, did he? Because it was on the floor pretty quickly. He knocked down Charles Oliveira. Islam's, from what we've seen, is a way better striker than Khabib. I know Khabib dropped McGregor. And the only reason I think Khabib's a good striker is because of the threat of the takedown. Now you can say the same thing about Makachev, but in that Volkanovski fight, there was already they'd already grappled a little bit, and then it went back to the striking, and Makachev had success. He really did. I think Makachev would win by split decision. There'd be rounds where Khabib would just try and hold him down. There'd be rounds where Makachev would probably out wrestle Khabib. Both pretty similar on the judo level, but eventually their wrestling would count each other out, and it would just be a striking matchup and. Islam would win. He's a better striker than Khabib. Um, like I said, it would be the toughest fight in Islam's career, besides the time when he got knocked out cold. But I think Islam would, yeah, I think Islam wins by a split decision. He just got better striking, and the wrestling counts each other out. Moving on to featherweight again. This one's pretty quickly. Max Holloway versus Ma uh, Max Holloway versus Alexander Volkanovski. Max, Vol Max Holloway in 2018 versus current Volkanovski. Volkanovski is the greatest featherweight of all time. He's already beaten Holloway three times. He would maul and finish Volkanovski within two rounds. Enough said. Yeah, there's no way Max Holloway is beaten. There's, there's not a chance. 2018 Holloway versus current Volk. Volk would smoke him within two rounds. It's not even close. I think I just move on from here. I don't, I don't know what to say. Current Volkanovski with Brian Ortega, Yair Rodriguez... Max Holloway three times, Korean Zombie, Jose Aldo, Chad Mendes, Islam Makachev, all those on his resume, I know he didn't beat Makachev, but all those on his right resume versus Volkanovski, versus Max Holloway in 2018, Volkanovski would beat him in one or two rounds. He's better grappler, better striker, there's no way that Holloway wins this fight. Then we move on to Bantamweight. TJ Dillashaw versus Aljamain Sterling. I know this fight happened and Aljamain Sterling won, but I actually think TJ Dillashaw in 2018 would win this fight. This was around the prime Dillashaw era, 2016 to 18, before he got pot, like taken out for steroids, was prime Dillashaw. There's no layoff because he's obviously when he fought Aljamain, when he fought Sterling in 2022, he had like a what a, a four-year layoff. No layoff at this point. No old age. No injuries that he suffered during training camp to, to handicap him in the fight. I think it, current Sterling would definitely... Because TJ was a decent grappler back then too. I don't think Sterling just takes him down and dominates him. The striking definitely goes to TJ Dillashaw. I can see TJ knocking him out. Sterling's already shown that he's not got the greatest chin of all time. 
you know, knocked out cold by Marlon Moraes. Yeah, I think TJ Dillashaw wins. A lot of people would disagree with me, disagree with me and say Sterling wins because he's already beaten him and he's got the grapple in, but I genuinely think TJ Dillashaw beats him. I really do. He knocks him out, clears him up. TJ Dillashaw, I believe, already had two defences at this point before he got taken out of the UFC for steroids. I think I think TJ Dillashaw beats Sterling. I don't see what Sterling can do. Current Sterling can do to TJ Dillashaw five years ago, unless he was to take him down and lay on his back the entire round until he found a sub. I don't see it winning. Like I said, it's prime Dillashaw, two defences, all-time high confidence, no layoff, no injuries, no old age. I think he wins by a KO. Moving on to the final flyweight, Alejandro Pantoja versus Demetrius Johnson. Um, Pantoja only just won the belt this Saturday, so that's why there's no picture with him in the belt on. But there's no way that he beats um, Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson, he's the flyweight goat. He's also, in my opinion, the third greatest MMA fighter of all time. Pantoja has got power. He's got good submissions as well, but he's got nowhere near the level of submissions that Demetrius Johnson has. Nowhere near as good as a wrestler. It would actually be a somewhat competitive fight, so I don't think Demetrius Johnson would just wipe him out immediately. It could even be competitive. I could definitely see Pantoja having success somewhere, but I think eventually the fight IQ of Demetrius Johnson, he'd find a way to win this fight, 100%. And he would sub him within three rounds. There's no way that Pantoja wins this fight. Yeah. The experience, the grappling, the striking everything Demetrius Johnson would win this fight and I think he would win by submission like I said don't think he's going to knock him out cold if Brandon Moreno can't even drop Pantoja then I don't see how Demetrius Johnson is because Demetrius Johnson's a good striker but I don't think he's like an insane knockout artist but Johnson would sub him within three he's the greatest flyweight of all time he's still winning nowadays as well in like one FC yeah Demetrius Johnson subs within three but yeah Please tell me if you agree with any of these takes, if you disagree with any of these takes, and just let me know.